This is the 5 minute guide to HMS Glowworm, a G class destroyer of the British Royal Navy. HMS Glowworm was a G class destroyer of the Royal Navy. Laid down in August 1934, launched in July 1935, and commissioned in January 1936, she carried the pennant number H92, with the ship's motto being Ex Tenebris Lux, or Out of Darkness, Light. As with the other G-Class destroyers, she carried four 4.7-inch guns in single mounts, two forward and two aft, with one firing over the other. She also carried two quadruple 50 caliber machine gun mounts for anti-aircraft defense, but she was the test ship for a quintuple torpedo launcher, so her torpedo armament was two quintuple 21-inch torpedo arrays, as opposed to the quadruple arrays that her sister ships had. 20 depth charges with a launch rail and two depth charge throwers completed her armament. At 36 knots, she was slightly faster than the average G-Class, perhaps because she was built by John Thornycroft and Company, a British shipbuilding company that was known for producing very high-quality destroyers. After commissioning, she was assigned to the first destroyer flotilla of the Mediterranean fleet and spent much of her pre-war career patrolling the Spanish coast, as part of the non-intervention neutrality patrols during the Spanish Civil War. Somewhat prophetically, in 1939 and 1940, she ended up ramming or being rammed by two separate ships, firstly her sister ship Grenade in 1939 and later the Swedish ship Rex in 1940, both of which required repairs. Although she started the war based in Alexandria as part of a Mediterranean fleet assignment, by the end of the year, Glowworm, along with her sisters Gallant, Grafton and Greyhound, had all been dispatched to the Western Approaches Command. After a bout of convoy escort duty and anti-submarine patrol, she was transferred again to the 22nd Destroyer Flotilla for North Sea Patrol and escort duties. And by March 1940, she had been transferred yet again to the 1st Destroyer Flotilla of the Home Fleet, basing herself at Scapa Flow on the 20th of March 1940. The final operation of her short career would begin on the 5th of April 1940, as Glowworm, along with her sisters Greyhound, Hero and Hyperion, were dispatched as the escort for the battlecruiser Renown, which itself was covering a mine-laying operation in Norwegian waters. Two days later, Glowworm was detached from the task force to search for a man who had been lost overboard in heavy weather. The next day, with the search unfortunately unsuccessful, Glowworm was re on her way to rejoin the Renown when she ran into two German destroyers, the Bernd von Arnim Z-11 and the Hans Ludemann Z-18. Both of these ships were in turn the escort for the heavy cruiser Admiral Hipper, which was on its way to land German troops in Norway. Both vessels were substantially larger and more heavily armed than Glowworm. Nevertheless, Glowworm opened fire and the German ships retreated. The ship's captain, Lieutenant Commander Gerard Broadmead Roop, realised that this was a particularly unlikely situation. When you're outnumbered two to one by ships that are much larger than you and outgun you quite significantly, you're not supposed to be the one chasing them away. He realised very quickly that this was probably a trap and most likely involved German heavy units. However, he had a fast ship and he knew his duty was that if he knew about German heavy units in the area, he needed to find them, shadow them and report their position so he pressed after the German destroyers. Sure enough, just before 10 o'clock in the morning, Admiral Hipper spotted the glowworm engaging the von Arnim. Although the Admiral Hipper initially had difficulty distinguishing the two ships, within eight minutes she'd opened fire with her eight-inch guns. Glowworm was hit by Hipper's fourth salvo, and in response started to make smoke to break contact. However, the Hipper had been equipped with radar earlier in the year, and this allowed it to see through the smoke. The glowworm re-emerged within range of the Hipper's secondary battery, so now both the 8-inch and 4.1-inch guns were firing, as well as obviously glowworm's own 4.7-inch battery returning fire. Somewhat unsurprisingly, this unequal gunfight didn't go the glowworm's way, with repeated hits rapidly destroying one of the ship's 4.7-inch guns, as well as landing hits on the radio room, bridge, engine room, captain's cabin, and finally the mast. The impact of the mast collapsing caused a short circuit in wiring, which caused the ship's siren to start blasting out an eerie wail which would go on for the rest of the battle. Glowworm would then fire one of her quintuple tubes at the Hipper, followed by ducking into the smoke screen whilst getting the second tube working and releasing another spread. However, the Hipper's captain kept his bow pointed towards the Glowworm the entire time, specifically to reduce the threat of torpedoes, 
As it was, the German crew reported that one or two of the torpedoes passed incredibly close to the Hipper, although no hits were scored. The Hipper followed Glowworm through the smoke screen and emerged at very close range. At this point, accounts differ as to exactly what happened, but most surviving accounts do indicate that Lieutenant Commander Roop ordered the Glowworm to ram the Hipper. And in conjunction with this, the ship began a hard turn to starboard. Some accounts claim that the ship's steering was jammed at this point, which would make this turn a lucky coincidence, although as with HMS Exeter at the Battle of the River Plate, it is possible that the bridge steering had been knocked out and the order was executed anyway through a secondary steering position further aft in the ship. Either way, the Hipper couldn't get out of the way in time and Glowworm struck the Hipper just behind the main anchor. The bow broke off, still embedded, and the rest of the ship scraped down Hipper's side, opening up several more hulls and destroying the forward starboard torpedo tube mounting. Despite Glowworm being on fire as it drifted clear, the 4.7-inch guns resumed firing as soon as they had a clean bearing. However, between the loss of the bow and the various hits from the Admiral Hipper, it was clear that Glowworm was not long for this world, and Lieutenant Commander Roop ordered the crew to abandon ship. At this point, Captain Helmuth Heyer of the Hipper showed a great deal of humanity when, despite his ship having just been on the receiving end of Glowworm's level best attempts to sink it, he put the ship over to, deployed rope lines, and ordered his crew to do their level best to save as many of Glowworm's ship's company as possible. This included manoeuvring the Hipper downwind of the sinking ship to ensure that as many men as possible could reach safety, with the German crew helping many of them over the side. Still alive, Lieutenant Commander Roop was spotted next to the Admiral Hipper, pulling some of his men to the ropes and helping others get on life jackets that the German crew had thrown overboard. Unfortunately, he left his own safety just a little too late, and when he finally grabbed hold of a rope, he was unable to keep hold of it and was swept off into the sea and was not seen again. The Admiral Hipper's crew followed the example of their captain, as one survivor recounted that despite the sick bay being full of injured German sailors from the fight, when he woke up, there were other German sailors rubbing him down of oil and congratulating him on making it a good fight. As the Hipper finally headed for Norway, Captain Heyer did one more honourable thing. He drafted a carefully worded message describing the engagement and the bravery of Lieutenant Commander Roop, sending it via the International Red Cross to the British Admiralty. This was extremely unusual for an enemy captain to recommend his opposition for a gallantry award based on an engagement that had just been fought. In 1945, Lieutenant Commander Roop was officially awarded the Victoria Cross, Britain's highest decoration for valour on the battlefield, primarily as a result of the testimony of his opposite number on the Hipper. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to tag your question with Q&A if you want to leave a question for the dry dock.